Hello everyone, today we will look into tooltips, how we made them in Unity and how they work in general. Also, what is a really great feature is that we will be able to send items via chat. So let's check out what we will implement today and then we will see the implementation. So uh, let me start the server and start my Unity client. And also, while this every, everything started, there, there's a small bug which I f finally fixed. And this bug took more time than it should be. But I will show you um, the bug and will also show you how, how I fixed that. So when I send over over the chat to myself or to another player, it doesn't matter. A text which in our case is an ad, then a curly open bracket, then ID of the item, curly close bracket and another ad. Then the game will replace that with this link. And when I hover over this link, I can see what item I send. And this also works for multiple items and within text look at my item and then flower add and also keep in mind uh, we just have flower currently and oh it doesn't break fine there but if I go over with my mouse there it also works But, like always, we discovered a new bug. We will fix that later. Also, in the inventory, if you hover over the item, it also shows this little tooltip. How do we make a tooltip like that? And what are the pitfalls? First of all, this tooltip is fully client side. The backend doesn't care about that one bit. That's why we have um, this little replacer code like add curly brackets whatever and the backend doesn't really care about that the only thing that i changed in the backend for the chat i replaced those uh, html tags the reason for that is so that the players can't tinker with the chat too much because when we when we go back in and um, I show you a feature of Text Mesh Pro. Maybe you know the feature, maybe not. Uh, let's just modify this chat on the fly. If you go to body, scroll view, content, chat message, mm -hmm. then we have the text here. And what, what players can do is they can do something like color, make the color white and maybe even make the text bold or it is bold already maybe make it italic and you don't want your players to tinker around with that too much then your your chat will be unreadable and everything that's when we send stuff to the backend like b test slash b then the backend will remove those simple code just to to fix this issue altogether so but in the end how how does this work well what i do when i want to make a tooltip is first of all i create a new canvas the reason for that is i want the tooltip to be on top of everything and when I create a new canvas, I can configure the canvas to be at the sort order, a very high number like 10,000 in this time. And then I, it is sure that the canvas will lay over everything, which our, for example, UI canvas will display because the UI canvas has the sort order of zero. Also, what is important to know is in which space your, your canvas works. Because our canvas scales with screen size, our canvas really knows the position in screen space. 
if you modify that and you have a, a canvas with, for example, in camera space, then you have to ca transform your space from screen space to camera space. And this you have to keep in mind in your source code, because when you read your input mouse position, then the mouse position will be in screen space overlay. And if you want to calculate it in screen space camera, then you have to do camera.main or the camera you want to do. And then there's a little function for that. Let me, let's just hit up, hit up Visual Studio and I, I show you the function, why not? Also, there are multiple ways to read the input from the mouse where the mouse position is. And we use the new input framework. So if you're using the old input framework, then obviously you have to do the old one. Uh, let me check. We have inventory slot, which is the inventory slot, which displays the, uh, the mouse, the mouse behavior. So. Here we have mouse current dot position dot read value. This is for the new input API. For the old one, it was input dot mouse position was possible. And then you get the mouse position. But for the new UI framework, it works like that. Pretty easy also. This mouse position is in the screen space. And if you want to convert it to a camera space, then you, first of all, you need to know which camera. Uh, let's be let's be easy here. Let's do camera.main, which basically is the main camera in Unity. So Unity really searches a camera which the with the tag main camera, like the comment here stated, uh, which is pretty bad because every time you do camera.main, it searches the whole game object tree. And normally you don't want to do that. Normally what you want to do, for example, on a wake, we, we create a variable camera equals to camera.main and then we will save this variable and use this variable. But for, for the sake of the display purpose, we just use it here now. And there is a, a screen to viewport point. There's even screen to world point. Um, this is tricky, but le let's first of all do screen to viewport point. This converts our our vector to to a viewport position. So when you use the other in not screen space overlay, when you use screen space camera, then you have to do this conversion to get the right value because screen space camera is zero to one, if I remember correctly, and the screen space overlay is the actual pixel position on the screen. So if now you know how to get uh, the position of the mouse, what, what you now can do is pretty much uh, detect when where the mouse position is. So where the mouse position is, we want to display our tooltip exactly at that position. So if, let's, if we go into the game real fast, and we check and when I move my mouse then then this tooltip moves also with it that's because I read the mouse position and send it over to the to the tooltip screen to display it and what what we do here is is straightforward we have two commands one is hide tooltip this is when we exit and want to show tooltip and show tooltip just give us, gives the ID and so the item we want to display and the position where our mouse currently is. So it displays it on the right position and high tooltip also gets the ID, which might be important if we have certain overlays, which normally don't happen, but I've developed it anyways 
to be on the safe side here, to be honest. So there are multiple ways to get uh, to know when in Unity the mouse hovers over a certain object. And uh, the currently best way is to use on a eye pointer enter handler and eye pointer exit handler. They are quite simple. You get those. You have to implement those handlers because the interface defi defines them, and you get the mouse position over the pointer event data. So you have your exit and enter. So when I scrap up this code here, when I will just remove that, and we check what will happen, then the tooltip will be displayed when I open the inventory but it doesn't move with the mouse. So if, if there is a feature you want to um, want to have it like that, then just, just keep the code like that. If I will be able to press play just once, this would be great. So. So when I open the inventory now, it doesn't move with the with the mouse, but when I enter, it displays it where I, I entered, and when I exit it, it hides it. That's what this does. On exit, it sends a hide publish over our pub subsystem, and when I enter, it show, sends a show tooltip over our pub subsystem. Pretty straightforward. So I also save a local variable, mouse hover true or false. On exit it's false, on enter it's true. And if that's the case, then I check read the mouse position and update the mouse position of the tooltip, basically. There is no on pointer move. And there are quite a lot of interesting theories why that is the case. Um, my theory is honestly um, Unity being a bit lazy here because a lot of people say they work with Raycasts and Raycasts are kind of expensive and whatever but Unity could also do exactly the same thing which I do here on enter it's true then we we don't need to Raycast because they Raycast the exit anyway so they know when they enter an exit so I think this is the way Unity wants us to deal with that, and this is totally fine, we can deal with that, but it would be great to have a on-pointer over object or on-pointer hover or something, which gives us the data also. But it is what it is. Uh, we implement it like that, and we are fine. So, if we now we will be able to, to send the, the show tooltip and the high tooltip with this this lines of code it's really not that much and on the other side show tooltip and hide tooltip are pretty straightforward they are empty object like every pops up object for us and then there is someone subscribing to that and the one subscribing to that is the tooltip screen controller and he has two functions on show tooltip, on high tooltip, and on show tooltip, he checks the ID. If the ID didn't change, we don't need to read the the tooltip configuration, like the text we display and everything. We don't need to read that again because it's already set. And this saves a little bit of CPU time, but it's not too much. It doesn't matter at the end, to be honest. But why not? And then we set the position of the tooltip based on the mouse position and then we enable the game object and this is, this is everything we do and on high tooltip only if the ID is equal to the currently displayed tooltip then we hide it. So when you have overlapping tooltips then the, the not displayed tooltip can't hide the other tooltip and whatnot. At least the probability is lower to go wrong there. And this is everything we do. And then on Unity side, we have this canvas, like I said, to just to have a display on top of everything. And it just triggers this game object. And if we enable the game object, then we have the, the tooltip stuff in it, and which just has a header for text. 
and it has the content and the content can be anything we, we can color the content li like we like i showed before maybe we want comment to be red did i do something wrong yes now comment is red and everything and we can make it a bold and this this is data which obviously comes from from a configuration file and this is not something we configure here for for every game object and that will be the next video how we configure those texts and how we do game design configuration in the future because there are many ways you can do that for example you could do uh, make an Excel file, which is quite popular, especially in AAA development and ev everything about there. Most of the time they use Excel and everything for, for their game design, which is quite good because you can do uh, diagrams and everything in there and compare the values, search and everything, which is great. There are other ways to do that. Normally what people do is they export it to a CSV file and then import that CSV file in the code or JSON or whatever. There, there are many ways to do that. But what I want to do is I want to develop an editor script which shows a UI for us to configure our game. The reason for I normally when I would work professionally on a game, I would never do that because it's a lot of work for pretty much nothing. You do, you. You don't provide more functional, not more functionality than usually Excel does. So why the hell would you do that? But I think for teaching purposes in this YouTube video to teach you how to create your own editor scripts and editor UI, I think this is a very great example. That's why we will do that in the next video. But today we will talk about Canvas. Uh, talk about tooltips. So, and yeah, we can show and hide the tooltips. That's that's I guess pretty straightforward and Unity uh, default things. Then we also have those configuration files, which we load in via the uh, the I container, which is which color corresponds to which uh, rarity in our game. So we don't have to do that every time. And then we have this item provider. And as you can see, because in the next video we do configuration currently in this item provider, it is very much hard coded to be flower as the ID. So currently everything I give in there. So even if I give it the ID, uh, I give it the ID test. The game will replace it with flower because the the game asks this item provider what name does the id have the reason why we don't just return id or something in the future is localization because maybe the flower in germany is called blume and maybe we want to give in if the game is configured in german we want to return blume and uh, if it's in English, we want to return flower or something like that, right? Then we get rarity. Uh, we can change that pretty much currently if we want to test something maybe to uncommon. Uh, our rarity is common, uncommon, epic, legendary. And we have those replacers which replace the color and everything. Here at the bottom when we get the content, so it, it's just a template string and uh, then we replace some variables here in there like the color and the variety this will later be done uh, also via our game design configuration where where they can use those variables to make everything beautiful but they still want to um, maybe a rarity is not important for a different item then maybe they won't don't want to show this line and everything we need to be able to do that so the, but that is for the for the next for the next video like i said sorry for jumping around and 
yeah we made it uncommon now so when i hover over this i have to restart it because i changed the code and unity sometimes really isn't good at replacing the the assemblies and everything while the game is running because it would need to re instantiate now it's green because green is the color for uncommon and then it looks like this and this way currently we can configure everything also i fixed another, some other things when you are chatting and you're pressing some input values then those values aren't converted into whatever action is without chatting because I well, while I was testing this I was writing item and the inventory popped open which was very annoying to be honest and now this is also fixed but that's that's not very interesting source code is pretty boring if you want to check it out you can check in github but it's not about this topic here So how does this work? When we most ho hover over this this text and it shows the, the tooltip. So how do we detect that the mouse is over a certain string in the text mesh pro? This is, I think, very interesting. Also, now I want to show you the, the great bug I had, which really was annoying for me. This raycast target of this object inventory changes, which is very much hidden if nothing happens, above exactly above those text was a raycast target. And in my perspective, I was playing around and I was working checking why doesn't it work and currently the issue is not pretty much present. Let me do, do that again so it was like that and i was writing sending in chat and it tied it and i didn't know at the beginning why why it was so strange i i i thought first it's it's my code of reading um where in the text my the mouse pointer is hovering so i thought maybe i do something wrong with the text mesh pro api but actually there is, was a hidden object on top of it and after my mouse hovers over it this object gets entered uh, with the with the eye pointer handler and when something enters, the mouse enters something, it will exit everything else. And what happened, it entered this object and then it exits my chat message here. And if it exits my chat message, oh no, we know why the uh, text was broken there. And if it exits my chat message because it's entering the inventory changes, then Obviously, it's not working. And if we disable raycast target, then the raycasting is ignores inventory changes. And then this is working perfectly fine. And this took me too much time to find out, to be honest. Like always, if you know the issue, it's quite, quite obvious. But if you, if you especially do something new and this text mesh pro thing here was something new for me, uh, you might doubt yourself where well, you shouldn't but yeah how does this work first of all let's check how this looks like um, I don't know if I can't can increase the screen let me just open notepad real fast and increase the text size what I do I replace the add flower with the name of the flowers with its brackets and I put the color in there with the um, outside of it 
with the rarity and then I add a link with the ID of the object. And the TextMesh Pro API pretty much is able to work with that. So when we go to, I think I made a new game object, item link detection, then it will also be able to replace everything. So when I set the text, then it will search this, this replacer. Uh, so it will search this regex, which is basically like that. And the regex will be replaced with the, with the rarity color link and everything. Here's the template for replacing it. So when I set the text of the chat message, it will search the regex if the regex hits anything. And if there are multiple hits, it gives me multiple hits. The regex basically, um, if, we, if we replace the... It's searching for an add session, then it's searching for open brackets. Both need in regex to be escaped. That's why we escaped it. Then we do uh, open... Uh, open bracket. The reason for that is I want this to be a group. And a group in regex means regex gives me the whatever value this group holds. And I want an ID to be with small a to z, big a to z, 0 to 9. So every numbers, every normal uh, characters a to z. And then I want a dash be valid and the underscore be valid. And then I do a uh, corner bracket close. So I have this corner bracket. This defines whichever character is valid. And then a star defines whatever many there is. So if these characters that we defined here whatever character, how many they are, we want them. And then we do those round brackets around them, so we group them. So regex will return us this text, basically. And then we want some closing, so we, we have a close curly bracket and an add again for closing. And when we do a regex match on that, then what what will happen is that the, the text, which is in result, and we do regex match on, on the result, and regex is created here. It's just new regex with our regex code that we entered. And if we match the text against that, we get matches back. So if, if a multiple matches hit in a text when multiple items were sent, basically, then we get multiple matches. And the thing is, in the first group is always the match itself, and we don't care for that. We just want the group match with our round brackets that we defined. And this is, uh, so we want to have two groups. One is the match itself, and one is the one we are looking for. And then we do the one we are looking for, we get it, and then we we get the value, which basically is the ID within those curly brackets. And then we get an item replacer, which just replace curly brackets ID with, with the ID, because I was lazy. It just does this too, or whatever that is. We, we could just hard code that at the bottom, but it's easier to configure everything at the top if you want to change something. And then just, uh, we get the item with, with the full link, which is this full item thing here. And then we replace those, those text with the item links. That's everything we do. Uh, we can even debug that. Might be interesting. So when you're in Visual Studio debug and you add attach to Unity and you have one Unity instance running, then hopefully Unity will not crash and strange things won't happen. 
the reason is I didn't stop Unity. Give me one second, let me stop Unity first. And then again attach to Unity. Then we can hit play. Because it again replaced the assembly in the background and things weren't initialized correctly after that. So let's do a clean start, clean start because when the actual game is running, we, we don't replace assemblies in the background usually. So this shouldn't be an issue. So we log in again and first of all, let me delete all breakpoints. Obviously debug, delete all breakpoints, yes. And then we want to do item link detection and want to t test that. And let's just do one with test inside and other one with flower inside. Then we send that, we send it to the backend, the backend sends it back and we get the string to display and it looks like that. It's add test other whatever with our name before that. And then we have our regex, which is the regex that we defined together. Then we check the matches and we have matches too, obviously, because we send the two items exactly what we wanted to. And then we check for the first match, how many groups are there? There are two. And like I told you, the, the first group is, uh, can I get that easy? No, let's do a watch then. Uh, match dot groups zero. So as you can see, zero is the whole match itself and match.groups1 is the, is the group that we defined with the round brackets, which is just the ID itself. So this is cut off and this is cut off in the group one because we made round brackets just about with the inside ID. And then we get that in group one, which is exactly easy for us because we now get the ID of the item the player wants to display. Then we get the item replacer, which is just add curly brackets with the ID. And then we, we get the item link, which is this, the rarity color, the link, and then the text. And then we replace that with string replace pretty straightforward. And we do that for the other match also. The other match is as here at the bottom flower as group one and this is how you can do easily things like that with regex and then it got replaced both have the name flowers because like i showed before it is hard coded currently so when item provider get name with an id it always returns flower if you remember That's how we replace the text, but how does this mouse thing works? Well, we also have here on iPointer enter and iPointer exit. And here iPointer enter just says mouse hover to true. And iPointer exit says mouse hover to false and tries to hide the tooltip. And hide the tooltip checks if, if we ever display the tooltip with the ID and if if we did that, then it hides the, the current ID that we displayed and it will empty out the, the current ID that we displayed. So exits hides the tooltip and mouse hover falls and enter just says mouse hover to true. And then an update or you can do that in six update, I guess, but I did it in update, doesn't matter if the mouse isn't hovered over our object, then our update does nothing. And if our mouse is hovered, so enter is triggered and exit is not, then we read the position of the mouse and there's a text mesh pro text utilities, which with a function find intersecting link. And it gets the text mesh pro text that we display. It gets our mouse position 
and it can get a camera. If you give it a camera.main, then it will actually do the transformation that I showed you before with the camera.main, screen, to viewport point, and it will actually do that. But for our canvas conf configuration, we don't want that to happen, like I said before. So we give in now, and then text mesh pro knows it doesn't need to convert anything. And then it will actually return a link index with with the link index being minus one if no link is found and else it gives us the link and then we can do our text mesh pro text dot text info link info link index we get the link and then we can do get link id let's breakpoint that again and if we didn't hit a link so if a link is equal to minus one then we will hide the tooltip again. And if we hit a link, then we will show the tooltip. So we have a, is our game still running? Yes, it is. So when I hover over this mouse, then the link index is one. It could be zero when, when I hovered over the other link. And the link ID of this link is flower. And if I hover over the other link, then I get link index zero and the link ID is test because I wrote in test as an ID. And then we will show the tooltip with, with test and if it exits, then it will hide the tooltip again. And this is everything we need. Text Mesh Pro has an API for what exactly what we need. And uh, find intersecting link, if we go back to the string replace item, we do link equal then the ID of the item. So that's why we get the ID back because that's how we define the ID of the link for text match pro. And that's how that works. And honestly, when I started developing this, I always wanted to have this feature because I think it's a really, really cool feature for a game to have. Um, because you, you often see in MMORPGs, people want to send their items. Hey, does anybody need that? Hey, do you think this is a great item? What is this item used for? Or whatever in chat. And now we are able to do that. And it's actually quite simple because TextMesh Pro API is really sophisticated here and does the heavy lifting for us with the find intersecting link. The, the other thing here is just uh, because I don't want the players to be able to send around HTML tags like, like horror. So I, I remove those lower and greater than characters and just put a replacer in which goes over the network. And we, we could just we instantly replace this with, with this whole, whole text and send that. But I think this is a good way of doing it, to be honest. So this is it for today. In the next video, we will do configuration and write editor scripts to be able to configure our game within the editor so that we can define items. And I will also show how we export that for the backend if the backend needs it and everything. But currently we will just have display text configured so the backend is not interested in that. I wish you all a great day and a great weekend. I really want to thank my Patreon, Julian, for supporting this project. Bye.